Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Weekly Update. It is the 16th of August on this wonderful Sunday morning. Um, as always, my goal is to really just kind of quickly go through the latest updates related to Azure Infrastructure Services that have happened this week. And it's a pretty quiet week. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time on one of the core new things that have actually been released. Firstly, other videos. So I did release kind of a DP900 80 minute overview of basically all of the data services in Azure, um, getting you ready for that data fundamentals exam. And then I spoke live at the Azure Singapore user group. So I recorded that and just uploaded it. That was really an overview of Azure AD. I think that's about 45 minutes. And I do have a shiny new PC. Um, for those that have been watching for a while, um, this is a, an interactive touchscreen connected, it was to an Intel Nook. Now I switched from the 55 to the 75, and occasionally the screen would go black for just like a second. So I spoke to Dell Support, they thought, well maybe it's the HDMI, maybe it's the Nook. So I'm now display port via this that I just built Thursday night. So if you see the screen go black during this presentation, it means none of it has fixed it, and I'll probably uh, cry, um, maybe a good 30 seconds. So anyway, what's new this week? And before I get to that, just as always, um, obviously it's a lot of work to put these together, so please, please um, like, subscribe, comment and share, it really helps the YouTube algorithms um, bring more people to the video. So on the Azure Compute side, um, Azure Functions now actually support PowerShell Core 7. So there's a whole stack of different runtimes that I can use with Functions. There's Java, Python, Node.js, .NET Core, and PowerShell Core 6.2. Well now, when I deploy it, I can select 7. So I can get the latest version of PowerShell. It, it's a great way to run PowerShell. Um, Functions is serverless. So I only pay for kind of the cycles that it's using as my code executes. And remember with functions, I can trigger from a schedule, um, I can trigger from some kind of event. I could fire off from event grid, hey, so it gets written to a, a blob, fire off this function. I can create a webhook to call it. So it's very versatile in how I can leverage that. Um, this new NCAS T4 V3 is available. This is in preview. So this is four NVIDIA T4 GPUs with the AMD EPIC processors. This is really geared towards machine learning, AI type workloads. Um, but now this is available in preview, this kind of new SKU. Because it is a quieter week, I'm including some of the open um, source databases. These are Azure managed instances, but they're based on open source database products. This is based on the Community Edition. Um, Postgres and MySQL is also MariaDB, which is a fork of MySQL. Essentially now, in GA, I can bring my own key, which is a customer managed key, for the encryption of the data. Before it was just system managed. Now I can actually bring my own key. I store it in Key Vault, and I can leverage that for the encryption. And also, they begin to encryption this week, for those same two databases, but in preview, they now support a double encryption. So I can still have, hey, the, the regular encryption, I can use system managed or my own, bring my own key. But on top of that, I can turn on a second level of encryption that only uses a system managed key. But again, that primary could still be customer managed. But now it's two layers of encryption. Um, the goal is to have sort of variations in encryptions actually leveraged. This is not going to be turned on by default, it's in preview, but when I turn this on, because it's now two layers of encryption, there is a 5 to 10% throughput drop. So it is going to have an impact on my performance, but that's available. And then this is kind of the, the cool thing for this week. We've probably used the Cloud Shell. You go to the Azure portal, you click the little dialog, and it opens up a Bash or PowerShell Cloud Shell. I can go and interact using Azure PowerShell commandlet um, through the CLI. It's actually running as an Azure Container instance behind the scenes on Linux. Even the PowerShell, because PowerShell Core is cross-platform, 
it runs on a Linux container. What this capability lets me do is actually now that Cloud Shell container will get deployed in a manner to which you can actually integrate with a virtual network. So any resource on that virtual network, I can now contact through that Cloud Shell session, uh, any connected network. So this would be useful, imagine I wanted to run some SSH command, for example. Ordinarily, I'd have to maybe VPN in or be on a connected network. Now I can just spin up a Cloud Shell and go and SSH to that virtual machine, run other commands against resources on that virtual network. Essentially, I'm now sitting in a container instance that's on that network. It's actually super easy to deploy. All I have to do is a virtual network and a resource group. Um, the resource group must be created the way the metadata is working in the same region as the VNet. So only West US and West Central US right now, this is in preview. So all I have to do first is in West US or West Central US, create a virtual network in a resource group. The resource group normally doesn't matter the region, but in this case, this metadata needs to be in the same region as the VNet. So I create that, and I just need the ID of your Azure Container Instance. I can actually get this if I do get AZAD Service Principal, searching for Azure Container Instance. It's this one that says ID. I don't want the application ID. I want the one that says ID. So it's gonna have a GUID. You want that value. That's the one I'm gonna to have to use in the templates because the way this is actually gonna work is, so we've got this documentation and what it's really doing is it uses three subnets for the container, um, for the relay service and storage. So what Relay is going to do, Relay lets me have things communicate that wouldn't ordinarily be able to communicate. It opens up a path. So what's happening is it's going to use this Relay service down here to let your browser go and talk to the Relay that's in my VNet and then talk to that container instance that's within the container subnet to get to all my resources. So it has to deploy this Relay. The way this actually works is there are two templates you deploy. So if you go and look down here, there are these Azure Quick Start templates. There's one that creates the network resources, and then there's one that creates the storage account. All I have to do is select each of those, and then I can actually click Deploy to Azure. And I'll quickly just show you what that is going to look like. So I did this this morning. So this first one, this is deploying the network resources. And you notice in here, I've got the resource group. I've got the relay namespace name. These are just names that I select. The only things that pre-exist is the resource group and the VNet name. That's it. All of these other things are details I'm putting in. Um, you could use a very small subnet. It's creating like one or two IP addresses. I've used the slash 27. So there's like 29 usable IP addresses in each of those. Doesn't need to even be that big. You can see I'm using a 0 to 27, so 227 and 64, um, 27. Again, could have been smaller. So I fill in those details and I deploy. Then I fill in the same template, but for the storage version, again, I'm copying over the same values for the storage subnet and the container subnet. I give it a storage account name, remember storage account names, letters, um, lowercase only, share name, deploy that. That's it. Then I do need to change the relay. By default, the relay only allows connections from within the network. I'm changing it to allow access from all networks. Now, that Microsoft article talks through this. I'm just kind of reminding you. So if you don't do this, if you don't set it to all networks, your browser won't be able to get to the relay and then get to this container you're deploying. If I've already got a Cloud Shell, I need to unmount it. So then I can say, hey, I wanna show me, unhide the VNet isolation settings. I'm gonna pick the region, West US or West Central US, whichever one you deployed to, pick my resource group, select my storage account, share, those details that I created and click create storage. It's gonna take a little bit longer to create that container the first time. 
but now you can see it's created it in my VNet Infra West US. Done. And then I can see the IP address that it actually created was 10.2.1.4. That was that IP address range that I gave it for the containers. Remember 10.2.1. If I go back and we look at my setup, remember container 10.2.1. So it used that um, for the actual container instance. So now when I'm connected to that, well, I can go and connect to any other resource on that network. So that's the new integration. If I don't need to connect to things on my VNet, I wouldn't bother with this. It's a bit slower. There's some minimal cost for the relay. But if this would be useful, hey, it's in preview, go and have a play. It literally takes five minutes to deploy. The other thing they did was actually, it's a container. It's based on Linux. What they've made available now is the composition file and the tools they use to create that container. So it's actually up on GitHub. So I can now jump over to GitHub, and what I can actually see is the repository for this. I could now modify it, so I could create my own fork off of this. I can maybe add additional tools and build it. And if I think it's really good and should be in the normal one, I could submit a pull request and say, hey, Microsoft, uh, come and use this, add this to your image. So it actually walks through how I can build this. And if you quickly go and look, if you go and look in the Linux folder, I can see this base Docker file. Here you can actually see, hey, look, yeah, it's based off of Ubuntu 16.04, and it goes through all the various types of tools that it goes and installs. And now I can easily go build that myself. I could modify it, play with it, uh, give some suggestions. So that was it from this week. Again, really hope this was useful. Um, comment below if any questions, uh, happy to kind of jump in and answer them. But until next week, take care.